Johnny Fever, and I am burning up in here. What? Uh, getting what we call the intro introducting, introducting shots. It's good to see you. Oh, it's good to be back here. You no, know, it is. Um, we uh, haven't really sat down in Texas like this, you know. A long time. I can't remember when we played really? this long here, you know, in one place. We haven't been to Texas in a while, have we? No, no, we haven't. Let's see. So you do it mostly. One night, we were talking about that. You know, when we were at Billy Bob's, we we love to to go out there and do the entertainers, but it's such a problem. They start the show so late that we're into overtime before we ever even start working. Mm -hmm. okay. And of course, you know how companies are about that. And also, it's a terrible place to shoot television. There is no place that we can really put the camera in the tripod where uh, we can keep people from walking in front of us. After all, when people pay so their close. money to come in and see the show, it yeah. can't be, you know, saying, hey, get out of the way of our camera, mm -hmm. you know. You have to be sensitive to their situation, That's too. Right. But we, we, we love to go out there because, uh, you know, they are the good stuff, right? And then I'll address the first question to Jesse. Okay. Let me know when you're rolling. I'm rolling. All right. Well... Jesse and Waylon, welcome to Granny's and welcome back to Dallas. It's wonderful to see you both. Um, it's uh, we're getting close to showtime, so I'll, I'll try to keep this interview brief. Jesse, uh, if I may start with you, uh, you know, all of us we hear songs that you and Waylon do, and and they evoke memories for us. And and sometimes, you know, one of your songs has very special meaning for for us. I'm wondering, do you and Waylon have a song that is your song? I think if we had one that was ours, um, it's one that we sing called Storms Never Last. Um, that's kind of our favorite one to do together. Is there any special significance to it? It's the only one we do together. <laughs> no, no, it's not true. I just... Yes, there's a lot of significance to it from from the fact that I wrote it, you know, that um, really our relationship inspired me to write it. And then it was a very simple song and I really didn't think it was worth much and Waylon loved it. And as a result, it's been one of my most recorded songs by other artists. And then Ralph Mooney uh, put a, a tremendous number of steel, you know, overdubs on it and at one time was thinking of an instrumental himself. And then when we went in to cut it, one time was when Weather went in to cut it, it was right after my mother's funeral, which he loved dearly. It was the first thing he sang after the loss of that. And then another time there was a tremendous legal battle going on during the time that he was singing it. So that song really has touched a lot of our life. Kind of the ups and the downs of mm -hmm. your life, huh? Mm -hmm. She wrote it uh, originally, the title was, uh, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, it was, it was Storms never last, are they wailing? Yeah. yeah. And what is this? We need yeah. to put another word in there instead of She's going to throw it away. She really was. She said, this, we're just not recording anything. I said, why don't you change that? And say baby, or honey, or, or Clarence, or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I should have took half of it, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and because of your insistence then, that's why, why you did it, huh? Uh, yeah, well, she, she recognized then that it was, was better. You know what's funny is that song don't rhyme anywhere. But that shows that each and every line stands on its own, which makes me mad. Mine have to rhyme or they don't go. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't make me mad. Wait, what about this new song you have about the latest news from Nashville? <laughs> yeah, but I like that song. I wrote most of that song right in the studio. You know, I just started writing on it and it came out, you know. And I think it's I think it's funny, I think it's good. And uh I'll just try and see if uh Cowboy singers still had a sense of humor about themselves, you know? Do they? Some of them do, some of them don't. <laughs> but the ones that don't, don't matter anyway. You know? What does Willie say about it? Uh, Willie grins of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Willie loved it, he did, you know. And uh, he, uh, he likes things like that. Willie's great, Willie is the same. You know, what you see, Willie, that Willie is the Willie. You know, he's never any different. 
Are you the same, Waylon? What we see is what we get? That's it. <laughs> I really am. You know, I, uh, um, when I go on stage, it's like I lost my mule or something, you know, but, and that's about the way I am otherwise. I'm not much different, you know. I may be a little more nervous than I was years ago, but uh, not any older. I can still jump as high, but I just can't stay up there as long. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you ever, maybe like 20 years ago, did you ever think that country music would be as widely accepted as it is now? Uh, yeah, I've always believed in it, you know, I thought it would, you know. It's, uh, it's great, you know. And uh, I tell you, country music, the reason it wasn't bigger sooner was uh, they have an old guard, you know, they call it, you know, in Nashville. And they, uh, one of their favorite sayings is, I wish L.A. and New York would leave us alone, you know. <laughs> and that maybe is one of the reasons that, uh, and they call it, you know, the people that want the pure country music. If they only realize that if you're going to have pure country music on a guitar, you'd have to use your thumb because a pick is, a, is, a, is, a, is an amplification thing, you know. But um, I think they're seeing more that uh, you cannot destroy country music, you know, like with instruments. You can't change it with instruments that much. You can you make it... Uh, bigger, you know, and have more areas. I think it's, uh, I think they just kind of sold it short for a long time. But now it's so wonderful. People have come out of the closet. You know, the bank president now is not ashamed <laughs> to say that he They're walking to drive, drive up to a red light and they will roll the window down and leave it down, you know, instead of rolling up the window when they're listening to the radio. <laughs> Many people think that, that learn their, uh, listening to country music. She's a recent convert to it. Uh, no? Jesse, really? Really? Mm -hmm. it was, Did you uh, resist it for a long time? <laughs> well, I don't know. I kind of liked certain songs that would get really big, like, you know, when I was growing up, I mean, in Arizona, like for the Western dances and things you'd hear, you know, uh, the really big ones. It was nothing to be ashamed of because that was just part of our upbringing, Western dances. You know, that's what you used it for. Uh, <laughs> you know, but really, it was later on in life that I, I, I grew kind of attached to it, you know, and discovered George Jones and Dodd Gibson. And, and understood Hank Williams' voice. At first, I thought he was the worst singer I'd ever heard. You know. Hank Williams. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, kind of had to grow on me, you know, that I appreciated the really great artist in it. You've done it now. You know that, don't you? What's that about <laughs> Hank Williams? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like a cat. <laughs> when you went country, you really went country. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you two are just delightful, and I look forward to a time when we can spend more time together. But thank Love you too. for allowing us to come in mm -hmm. here right before your opening. It's and, been great. Uh, we hope you have a great run here at Grand. Thank you. Thank you very much. We enjoyed it. Baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me, I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Cincinnati WKRP